Well, hello again, everybody. Today, I want to talk about a command that, regardless of how often you use SPSS, at some point is a command you're going to really want to be familiar with, and that's the select command. And the select command is very useful for us because it's going to allow us to select particular cases to keep in our analysis uh, and allowing us to start thinking about comparing groups if we want, or even using just a simple subset of our data. Now, the select command has a number of different options, and we use some more regularly than others, but at the end of the day, it's important for us to recognize how to use it, and also because it gives us a real strong ability to be able to manipulate our data as we move forward here. So the command for uh, select is going to be found under the data section, the data subheader. If you go almost all the way to the bottom, you can see the option called select cases, and I'm going to click that here. Now, on the left-hand side, just like any time we use SPSS, you can see a list of the variables in our data. Once again, I'm using the 2016 General Social Survey data. I'm only using a subset of that data just to make it a little bit easier for us to work with. Now, over on the right-hand side, you can see we have a series of different commands for selecting data. There are four different ways we can select the data. Uh, and then at the bottom, and we'll come to this in just a couple minutes, is how we're going to actually output that data. Uh, and it's important for us to s talk about that and make sure we're doing it in the way that makes sense for us in regards to our project. Now, the four different ways we can select the data, or whether or not a particular condition, or ultimately conditions, and we'll come back to that in a minute, is satisfied or are satisfied, a random sample of cases, whether based on a time or case range, and then finally using a filter variable. Now, that filter variable idea might seem similar to whether or not a condition is satisfied, but it's a pretty simplistic way to think about it. And don't get me wrong, it can be very useful for us depending on how our data is coded, but ultimately we want to be very f comfortable with all the different ways that we could go about selecting our data. So I want to start with the random sample of cases because I think it's the easiest one for us to wrap our head around. If I select this and click sample, then really what I'm going to tell the program is to tell me or select for me a selection of the data, which is ultimately going to either be a percent of the full data, or you can see here, I can tell exactly a specific number of cases based on a uh, the selection of the data. So in other words, I could tell it I want 100 cases from the first 1,000. By the way, if I want it from all of the data, I can give it a higher number, or I can give it the exact number of my data file. So I could say, I believe I have 2,867 cases in this general social survey file. I could say to it, give me the first 100 from the 2,867. Comfortable that's going to draw a random sample from the full data file I have available. Uh, the second option I can go with is based on time or case range. Now, if I click here, this is going to let me tell the program specifically a range of cases that I'm interested. Now, that range, by the way, is going to be based from the selection over here on the left. You know, on the left-hand side, we always have this numbering going one through Ultimately, it can get up into the millions, although for us, really, we've only got 2,867 valid values. Uh, and you'll note, by the way, if you scroll down, uh, you have the values or scores higher than the 2,867, which is, again, the number of cases in our data. It's going to be grayed out because there's not valid data there. So we could tell it, for example, give us the first hundred or the first thousand. Now, this assumes that the order here is meaningful. And remember that this isn't the sort of software program where these numbers, this range on the left-hand side, uh, is associated with the actual data. It just tells us what row we're looking at. So if I sort the data by, for example, age, and I tell the program to give me the first 100 cases, it's going to give me the 100 youngest people. Now, I could also sort it in terms of uh, age, but descending. If I tell it to give me 100 and I've sorted it descending, it's going to give me 100 of the oldest people in my study. So this allows us to use both the order and sort of the sorting uh, command to select out cases we're interested in. Now, the third option we have here is using a filter variable. 
Now a filter variable can be any variable in our data set. And you can see, by the way, we've got the little arrow over so we can move a variable over. So if I click this, it's moving age because age is of course the one highlighted at the top. But what it's going to do is it's going to make an assumption. And always be careful when the software is making an assumption for you. And the assumption it's making is that you've created a variable where the value of zero and only zero is going to be the group that you maybe don't want to include in your analysis. Now, if I use the variable age here, nothing's going to happen. And, and let me do a quick demonstration here. If I go to Analyze, Descriptive st Statistics, and I pull over age, and I run an analysis, I'm going to get 2,857 valid values and 10 missing. Now notice, none of those values correspond to zero. Now on the other hand, if I go to data, select cases, and I move age over as my filter variable, and I let it say filter out the unselected cases, we'll talk about the other options in a minute, and I say OK, and I run that frequencies again, you're going to see that nothing's changed here in terms of the 2,857 valid values, but notice what did change. My missing went to zero. Now, if I scroll up here, you can see with the original data, we said there were missing uh, 10. Well, that's because those 10 had a score of zero. Now, that's not so easy to see, but what I can demonstrate this, make it easier to see, is if I look at the data view. Now, right now, you can see, as I said before, on the left-hand side, you have this numbering system that tells us about our data. Now, if I sort age from low to high, and I'm going to tell it sort ascending, you can see that we end up with 18 going down, 19, and so on. And if I scroll to the very bottom, you're going to see that we have values going up to 89 and 99. Now, ultimately, this doesn't do very much for us in terms of our understanding of the data. Now, what I can do, however, is this. If I look at the variable of health, you can see right away there's a bunch of zeros here. So if I tell the program to run the descriptive statistics for me on health, I can see that that value of zero corresponded to about 977. If you don't know how I know that's zero, think about where we would find that information. So we have 977 associated with IAP. If I go to my variable view and I go to health, you can see zero is equal to IAP. So that means for the variable of health, I have 977 IAP. So if I go to data, select cases, and this time instead of age, I'm going to use health. And I'm going to say OK. And now something different is going to have happened with our data. And you can see, once again, we get our syntax command, filter by health. But if I go to variable view, I'm sorry, data view, I want you to look at what's happened over on the left-hand side. A number of our rows suddenly have a hatch sign through them. Why? Well, because if I look at these first four cases, all of which, which have a hatch through them, Health has a value of zero. Notice when health is not zero, in this case it's one, it's a valid score. When it's zero, not valid. Now what this means is that any time I run this analysis, it's going to drop the zeros. Now, that isn't a big deal for us because ultimately we weren't using the zeros anyway. They were listed as missing data. But this just gives you an idea of the way that the data is being handled in SPSS when we select cases out. So, Let's go back because, again, this wasn't really all that useful to think about. But let's look at an example where it's maybe a little bit simpler. I'm going to go to Data, Select Cases. Now note, by the way, that hatch symbol is still over here on the left. If I want to get rid of that, I actually have to reset and then say OK. And when I do that, you're going to see at the very bottom, Filter Off, Use All, well, all the hatches are gone, so I'm back to looking at the full data. So this time instead, let's talk about my race variable. I'm going to go to variable view, and I'm going to say, okay, race of my respondent. 
I have one, two, three, white, black, other. Well, we've talked about this variable before, but let's say for a moment, I don't actually want to include any of the white participants in my study. Instead, I only want those who are races reported as either a two or a three. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say data, select cases, and this time, instead of using that filter variable, I'm going to say if a condition is satisfied. Now, once I'm here, I'm actually going to have to make a command. And all it is is sort of a logical set of events. I'm going to tell the program, we're selecting the cases if, and I'm going to take race here, and I'm going to click it over, and I'm going to say if race is equal to 2, or, and this sign right here, if I just hover my cursor over it, you'll see the command. But that symbol there corresponds to what we call the logical or. I'm going to say if race is equal to 2 or race is equal to 3. So in other words, if race is equal to 2 or race is equal to 3, in other words, black or other, we select those cases. Any variable, excuse me, any case where race is equal to 1 or is missing, it's going to be treated uh, as an unselected piece of information, an unselected case. So I'm going to say continue, and for the moment, I'm still going to leave this filter out on selected cases and simply say OK. Now, if I look at my data, I'm going to see that once again, I've got a bunch of hatched out values. Now, you might remember from our earlier discussion that about three quarters of this data oh, were white respondents. So right away, we see a lot of data where cases are hatched out. But if you look, it's only ones where race is equal to 1. Now, by the way, if I run descriptive statistics on race in this case, then I'm going to see I've retained all of my black and all of my other respondents, but none of the white respondents are included in this. And that's because we've only selected those 2 and 3. Now, this can be useful for us, or maybe we want something a little bit more complicated. And certainly, by the way, we can make things more complicated if we want. If I go back to that selection command, one of the things that I could potentially do is add other modifiers if I chose to. I can use the AND symbol. Uh, I can use a greater than or equal to. So instead of maybe using race to select cases, I might say selective age is greater than or equal to 45. And if I hit continue and OK, then notice what's happened here. I have a lot of information which is crossed out. Now remember before, we sorted this by age, which it retained. So we told that anyone who is greater than or equal to 45 years in age. Now we've got 18 and 19 year olds. If I scroll all the way down, right when we hit that 45 mark, you can see the data stops being selected because we told it 45 or older. And that's what's getting selected out here. All right, one last thing I want to talk about in terms of this select command. Now, we've talked about different ways we can select, but what we can also do here are thinking differently about what the end product is. This selection that we've been using, this output of filter out unselected cases, has left our data set alone. In other words, when we finish this, sure, we've selected cases out. And you can see, oh, by the way, over here, we've basically created a filter variable. Zero for those who have been filtered out, one for those we've kept in. But we can also copy selected cases to a new data set, and we can just simply give it a new, uh, a new uh, name. And so we might say, you know, older than 44. And if I say OK to that, I apologize, doesn't like the fact that there are uh, spaces in that. If I say older than 44, Notice that time it worked because I took the spaces out. And if I go down and look at my list of tables, you'll see I have a new one. And if I, you can see again, age is still listed here in order. Notice that it's 45 now becomes row one. And in fact, as I scroll down, I don't have anyone under 44 in my study, or under 45 in my study, excuse me. And notice that we've lost about 1,200 cases. We're down to 1639. Let me close this and go back to the original file. So again, 
One other option we also have here is not to create a new file, but instead is to simply delete the unselected cases in the current file. Now, if you're going to do this, you really want to make sure your data is backed up first. Because once I say OK here, everyone 44 years and under is now gone from my data. I've deleted them. If I click the Save button right now, I can't back up. I can't go back to get those from 44 and under back into my data file. So it becomes incredibly important when we're using a command like this that we're aware of it and that we take steps to make sure we don't make a simple mistake where we end up losing a whole bunch of our data. All right, that's all I really wanted to say with that. I strongly suggest that with some of these commands, which again, I think everyone is probably gonna have to use at some point, Take some time to practice with them. You don't need to do anything very complicated. The logic stays the same regardless of whether you have 10 variables or 1,000 variables, whether you have three possible responses or 100. But again, making yourself familiar with them is going to make the process a lot easier for down the road. All right. I hope everyone has a very pleasant day.